This is A View from the Bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. These are definitely interesting times, but of course that was the old Chinese curse, you know, to live in interesting times. So uh, what do we do about it? We get together to educate, inform, encourage, and edify one another. Welcome to A View from the Bunker, a special midweek edition. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining me is a gentleman who's uh, taken it upon himself uh, with the help of a couple of friends to pull together the body of Christ in a gathering in July that we're very excited about. Sharon and I looking forward to this because it's uh, a lot of very good friends gathering, and we hope you'll join us too. And here to tell us about it is the pastor of Calvary Chapel of Lima, Ohio, and the host of Dr. Mike Live every Monday night, his uh, website, drmikespalding.com. And it's our honor to welcome back to the program the aforementioned Dr. Mike Spalding. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Derek, thank you for the opportunity. It's a blessing. Every time I get a chat with you or Sharon, it's a blessing to me, brother. So thank you. Well, same way. Uh, it, we, we feel the same about uh, you and Kathy. Uh, the Go Therefore Conference, you've been doing this now for a couple of years, and uh, we are honored and blessed that you've invited us to uh, come and speak this year, July 29th and 30th. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a pollen season here in the Ozarks. Uh, at uh, the uh, Harvest Revival Center in Brookville, just outside Dayton, Ohio, Um what motivated you to take on this kind of work? Yeah, that's so that's a question I get a lot, Derek, because um, as you know, um, Tom does these. Uh, you and Sharon speak at, at many conferences. This is a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, everything goes on behind the scenes. Most people don't understand the 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 gravity and the detail and and all these moving parts that you bring together. So, very good question. We started off uh, seven years ago. Now we just wanted to bring the body of Christ together and to offer some encouragement and some equipping. Um, and so we started very very small. We had four speakers, Derek. That very first year, it was uh, myself. Michael Bodia, Russ Dizdar, mm -hmm. and Coach Dave. That's how this all started. And the very first year, we had like 40 people. And we were thrilled. We were absolutely thrilled to have 40 people. So the next year, we expanded it. We had eight speakers. Um, we, we added um, um, Tom Dunn and, and David Hevner and a couple of other people. And we, and we ended up with 80. Now, 80 for our little little fellowship where we meet, Derek, it was starting to stretch because we we can seat comfortably 125. So once you get to that place, so we thought, okay, what are we going to do if we keep doing this? And so the next year, really just the Lord bless, and it was 300 people, uh, those in attendance and those uh, live streaming. So we – and we had already moved to another location. Um, but the reason that Kathy and I do this, the reason that the Lord laid this on our hearts to do this is because we, we, we see something in the body that needs to be addressed. And that is speaking about real life, real events, the things, not just the news, but the truth behind the news. Hey, that would make a good show, Derek. The truth behind the news. <laughs> you better trademark <laughs> you it before. Do that. Yeah. Well, you, you better trademark it before we beat you to it. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's the reason. So what 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 folks are going to hear that perhaps are not familiar with Go Therefore is that we have a wide range of, of uh, speakers that join us. And I have to say, Derek, that these speakers are all personal friends to Kathy and I. We, we know each of them, uh, consider them friends. We, we trust what they'll present. Um, and, and that's a big factor. We try not to stray into areas where, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that needs a few more anchor point. But anyway, um, so all the folks that join us, they're personal friends. Um, we appreciate their ministries. And so we're trying to, to build that bridge to the body of Christ and introduce them to truths that they're not going to get in church. Not very many places. Now, they'll if they come to Calvary Chapel in Lima, they're going to hear it. <laughs> but but that can't be said broadly uh, across America. So that's really the motivation for it, Derek, is to introduce the body. And, and by that, introducing truth, strengthen the body and give them a voice. Because, man, 
I, I hesitate to use this phrase because it's so worn out, but does the body of Christ need to, to be awakened today from its slumbers? I, I, the answer is clearly yes, in my opinion. Hmm. We see that in survey after survey. George Barna has done uh, yeoman's work in documenting the slide of the American church away from a biblical worldview yes. to, to where the majority of um, senior pastors today do not. Uh, youth pastors, forget it. You're, you're finding a needle in a haystack if you can find It's about one in eight uh, youth pastors today has a biblical worldview. So um, it's no surprise then that the people in the pews on Sunday mornings or Sundays and Wednesdays, whatever, are not being fed. So uh, gatherings like this are uh, important for that uh, and important for uh, just reminding those who do hold to a biblical worldview that uh, we're not alone out here. That's right. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And 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 this covers again because of the breadth of the speakers and their specialties, what they'll be presenting. It covers pretty good chunk of the things that are that are hot topics, relevant issues today that we're facing as the ecclesia. And and we're very blessed by that too, Derek. We're we're very excited about what um, well, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny is. She's just an and she's really been a pioneer in her field, um, and and uh, so she's joining us this year. Where I'm very excited. Uh, of course, Kathy and I keep a close close watch on you and Sharon and what you're into <laughs> and up to and presenting on you know uh, mysteries of the Bible, Sci Friday, all that stuff. We we keep our keep our eyes on you guys and what you're doing. So we're excited well, about you. what you're going to bring and and uh, but we've introduced some new speakers this year too that that. Um, I've become acquainted with recently in the last couple of years, and I thought this would be a good uh, platform for them to come and present and and start connecting with other people in 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 our circle. Mm-hmm. So, who who are some of these speakers and some of the newer speakers that people will uh, see at the Go Therefore conference? Yeah, so so one that I'm that I'm really excited about is uh, James Spence. James is a He's the founder of uh, Operation Heal America. He's a former, um, he's an Annapolis grad, former Navy pilot, retired FBI agent. Hmm. And, and so his, his ministry, Operation Heal America, based on uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14, of course, is to bring unity within the body of Christ. And I know that that's a, that's a truth and a, and, a, and a mission and a commission that resonates with you and Sharon from conversations that Kathy and I have had with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that is drastically needed today. But in order to accomplish that, we've got to get our eyes off of other people and their shortcomings, in our opinion, mm-hmm. and back on the Father and hearing from Him and coming together because. Man, we need it today. The body's got to rise up in that instance. So uh, Kenny C is going to be joining us. I know you and Sharon <laughs> love Kenny. We do. Uh, we do. Yeah. Yeah. He is He is a very, very uh, cool, awesome, awesome brother. Just love his his off, off, just, can I call it raw? Just saying what's on his mind and, and, and bringing it in such a way. Um, so, so we were blessed to, to have Kenny join us this year. Um, and then, and then of course we've got, uh, we've got pastor Casper. Uh, he is, he is a, a dear friend. Uh, I'll tell a very short story about pastor Casper. Um, <clears throat> before I met him, he contacted me and he wanted me to join him on his spiritual encounter show. Mm-hmm. And, um, he said something about LA Marzuli. So I contacted LA and I said, L.A., do you know a Pastor Casper? Because I have no clue who he is. He just contacted me and wants me to join him. Can you? He says he knows you. <laughs> now, looking back on that, Derek, that's why you're laughing, because Casper and L.A. are, are dear friends and uh, have collaborated together in, in different things. And uh, L.A. said, yeah, yeah, he's he's fine. Yeah, go ahead and join him. So, so from that, Casper and I have become very good friends. In in fact, to the point that he he I call him my big brother because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he's like a year older. He doesn't look a year older, but he's no, a year he, older doesn't. he doesn't. He <laughs> doesn't. He does not. 
Um, Sony and Pastor Casper is joining us. David Hevner will be with us. David and I became good friends. We actually met at a uh, Hear the Watchman mm-hmm. conference. I think it was in 2017 in Dallas. Um, but he didn't remember me from then. Uh, but we met at a conference that Russ and Coach put on in Canton, Ohio in 2018. And then we got an opportunity to chat and it just, uh, you know, birds of a feather and kindred spirits, the whole thing. Right. Um, so, so, so he'll be joining us. Michael Lake, of course, um, Mike has become a dear friend and we, we actually do the kingdom war room. As you know, you've yes. joined us before mm-hmm. on, on that platform. Um, Rick Hidalgo, Randy Conway, and you know Randy very well. Yes, good friend. And, uh, David Paxton. Mm-hmm. They're going to be presenting uh, the process of uh, authentication. And and I call it, I normally don't say that because most people say, well, what's the process of authentication? I put it this way. How they will walk you through how to come out of Babylon in a in an official behind the scenes capacity that will reap you many benefits um, within the civil picture. I'm, I'm, I'm being purposely coy mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I want people to, to come in and, and experience them uh, this for themselves. Of course, um, Tom Dunn will be joining us uh, this year. Um, Pastor Neil, uh, the host, uh, host church, of course, Pastor uh, Neil's running for governor in Ohio, and and uh, believe it or not, there is a chance, there is a chance that he could pull this off. Of course, it would be the wow. Lord pulling it off. Sure, but, sure. But uh, maybe off the air, I'll share some things that uh, that I've become aware yeah. of. Dr. John Diamond will be there. Coach Dave will be there. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and so, you know, Coach is the, coach is the one, uh, the one that has been at every one of these. And so he just marvels at, at what the Lord has done. And, and, and we give God all the glory, honestly, this, I'm not trying to be pious or, you know, um, faux, faux humble or anything else, Derek. I, we, we really do because, um, he's done this. The Lord has brought this together and pulled it off. And we've had good attendance for most of the years. We've had a, a, year where we had to, you know, when the insanity hit in 2020, we had to go online only. And Mm -hmm. uh, I said, I'd never do that again. It's, there's no substitute for coming together face to face, putting your arms around another brother or sister and, and, and greeting them and welcoming them and and catching up on how they're doing. Uh, And as you pointed out before we went on the air, Derek, this really is uh, like a homecoming. It really is like a homecoming. Yeah. You're seeing family that, uh, and, and folks that have family that maybe live, uh, you know, 10, 12, 20 hours away, that the only way you see them is to fly. You understand what we're saying. When you have a family reunion, those people that you love and appreciate, and you are able to put your arms around them and embrace them, there is no substitute for that. So, so that's one of the major reasons that we do this is to bring the body of Christ together for this time of encouragement and nourishment and, and connecting and networking. And it's all, and I, I want to say this, Derek, and I'll turn it back to you. Um, our hope is that this will light a fire or a passion for people to share Christ. Um, I used to say that I want people to become activists, but but too many folks they, they that leaves a bad taste in their mouth. So I, I, I've begun saying it this way: I want you to become activists in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. But in the process of doing that, you better be prepared to answer some questions that people have about what's going on in our world today. Um, because they're going to ask you, and if you're not prepared with the truth behind the news, mm-hmm. to tell them and answer their questions, um, then then you're probably going to find it a difficult path to travel with them. So so the whole thing is to encourage people to share Christ because the time is drawing near for his return. One of the things that we're seeing, I mean, setting aside the economic issues, um, here in the Ozarks, we're kind of lagging behind the rest of the country, but the uh, gas station closest to my house today just uh, changed their sign to four sixty five a gallon for regular unleaded. Wow. Uh, yeah, and the uh, premium unleaded hit 
you know, went, went over five bucks for the first time. Uh, now I know in California, you would love to be able to pay as little as five Oh nine a gallon yes. for, for your gasoline. So I'm not complaining, but, uh, the fact is that neither you nor I, nor anyone alive today has ever seen gasoline or diesel prices this high in America ever. But we're also seeing things like the tragedy, the, the massacre in Uvalde, Texas here just a couple of weeks ago, the, uh, the shooting in, uh, uh, in Buffalo, New York. Uh, others that have taken place here just in Philadelphia over this uh, past weekend, a mass shooting. But, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of shootings in, in my hometown of Chicago since the beginning of the year, which uh, attract very little attention because it doesn't sit, serve a particular narrative. Yes. As Christians, when people come to us and say, how can you serve a God that allows fourth graders to be slaughtered in what should be a safe space for them? How do we respond to a question like that? Yeah, and that's that's another great question, Derek. Um, philosophers, uh, Christian apologists, um, refer to this as the uh, um, the problem of evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's theodicy. How do you answer these objections? And it begins really with uh, our human nature and the status that we presently have in this fallen world. So sin nature is what I'm talking about. And and you can actually bring people through. It's a very quick, um, in fact, uh, Gregory Kukul from Stand to Reason Ministries yes, yes. Uh, did this many years ago. Um, he Because he spends a lot of time on the radio like, like, like you, Sharon, uh, and others. Um, he said you can actually walk people through this to help them that, to understand that a good God would not – prohibit free will. A good God is not going to coerce, it's not going to force you uh, to do anything. And so free will is a good thing. And if you're talking to people that do not know Christ, it's it's very easy to use the abortion issue. Mm-hmm. Um, you could tell them, would you like a law that outlaws it? No abortions ever for any reason. And, and, and even your liberal Christian friends are going to say, absolutely not. And so now you've established that that freedom of choice or free will is a very good thing. And then so then you move on to to um, well, how about a good God or a or a strong and powerful God? If he was almighty, then he wouldn't allow this. And it's like, well, actually, power and strength have nothing whatsoever to do or to say in reference to free will, because you can't have truly free will if you still have a a coercion element in that. So so a good God is going to allow free will, even though the possibility exists, the people are going to make very horrible choices. And that's what we see. That's 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 a very quick summary of how you answered that question. Right, right. There, there, there's a lot of other things that you could add to that depending on the person you're talking to, how much time you have. And if they're willing to listen to you unpack that, because there are there are profound theological, uh, biblical explanations for why having free will is a good thing. And the power, might, strength of God has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fact is that uh, this free will extends or the cre- the creation, granting his creations free will extends to the supernatural realm as well, which is why evil intelligences exist who... Um, are using us as pawns in their rebellion against, uh, against him. And uh, point. again, that's something that uh, we in the church have lost sight of over the last 2000 years. I sometimes that's wonder what the, uh, the apostles and the early church fathers would think of the, uh, the church in America today and looking at what <laughs> American Christians actually believe about the spiritual realm, the spirit realm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Will go- it be something along the lines of you believe what? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that? We didn't Where? say anything like that. <laughs> That's so, exactly right, Derek. So where do people go to register for the Go Therefore Conference? They can go to the conference website, gothereforeconference.com, gothereforeconference.com. The uh, registration fee is still only $59. We set it there uh, several years ago and just left it because we don't want money to be an issue Um yeah, we could charge $99 or more, but uh, Kathy and I said, you know what? It isn't about the money. As long as we receive enough through registrations 
and there will be a, a, a love offering taken is our goal every year, Derek, is a break even. I just I just want to break even. So if we can give an honorarium to the speakers and cover their travel expenses um, to some degree, we are blessed and pleased. So go there for conference dot com. Fifty nine dollars for the registration. And, and when you register, folks, print off the confirmation of that because that is your ticket. There's no physical tickets that we're sending um, in the hotel of choice. There are other hotels in the area. We have a special conference rate. If you mention the transforming word, go there for conference, the transforming word, go there for conference. The best Western in Inglewood is, is only $89, $89. So that's, that's the uh, hotel of, of choice. There's, there's other hotels in the area, but we would, we would uh, encourage you to go there. So, um, yeah. And will there be for people who can't or don't want to travel, not able to travel, uh, will there be a, a streaming video option? Oh, thank, thank you, Derek. Yes, yes, there is live streaming available. That is an option in your drop-down menu when you go to gothereforeconference.com, okay. purchase tickets. It'll say um, regular ticket or live stream. Ah, okay. And so you, you you can live stream that as well. And and we we have had several people already that have registered um, and uh, registered for the live stream. So yeah, that's a good option for sure. Yeah. It's uh, especially with the cost of gasoline these days, uh, travel is uh, taking a bigger bite out of uh, budgets than uh, than we would have expected even six months ago. But uh, uh, fifty nine dollars, very affordable. And uh, with this lineup, I mean, you, you're getting quite a range of speakers. You've got some really dynamic fire breathers like uh, Michael Lake, uh, like uh, Coach Dave. You've got others that are a little. I I tend to get a little weepy sometimes as <laughs> I get emotional. <laughs> Me too, Derek. Um, I do now, yes. But uh, yeah, you know, my my dad said once: the older you get, the more you realize uh, it's kind of silly to hold those emotions in. And when you start real thinking about where we are in this fight, and that God, for His purposes, chose us to be alive in this hour at this time, uh, yeah, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, so, quite a range of uh, uh, of uh, speakers, uh, ranges of expertise, and. Um, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to getting together with the group, and uh, we are honored and blessed to be a part of the Go Therefore Conference again this year. Go th- go there for for the first time, I should say. Go Therefore dot com is the website. Um, Dr. Mike Spalding is uh, putting it together. His website drmikespalding dot com. You'll have links in the show notes wherever you're watching or listening to this. Uh, Mike, thanks very much for uh, making this possible and for taking time out of your schedule today. Thank you very much, Derek. It's an honor to be with you, and looking forward to seeing you and. You and uh, Sharon again. I was trying to think when when did we cross paths last? I think Kathy and I last year uh, came through Missouri and stopped and visited, had lunch with you and I you and Sharon. I think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah. But it hasn't yeah. been often enough in recent years, so we're looking forward to it. Amen. Thank you, brother, so much. You'll find the link to Mike Spaulding's website in the notes, drmikespaulding.com, but of course the conference website, go there for conference.com. Please sign up. We look forward to seeing you in Ohio and tell you how we can see us if you're in California. We're coming to California in September. That and a couple of notes on the news straight ahead as a view from the bunker continues. Jesus told his followers to love our God with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. And that's what we try to do every week here at Gilbert House Ministries. This program is an outreach of our ministry. Every week, we search through the mysteries of end times prophecy on Unraveling Revelation. We look at the nexus of science and the supernatural on Sci Friday. We study the Bible verse by verse in chronological order at the Gilbert House Fellowship. And each week, I interview fascinating guests on my podcast, A View from the Bunker. Producing that much content takes time. Serving up that much audio and video costs money, and so we depend on your support. You can support us in a couple of ways. First, you can donate through our website at gilberthouse.org, or you can contact us through the U.S. mail. Gilbert House Ministries, P.O. Box 78, Crane, Missouri 65633. And you can shop at our online store, a sort of a virtual book table, where during the month of June, you can save 20% on every one of Sharon's seven novels in her series of supernatural thrillers, The Red Wing Saga. Just use promo code JUNE20 at checkout. That's JUNE20. 
We are grateful for your help in fulfilling our mission. We thank you for your prayers and your support. Walking the walk from the beautiful Missouri Ozarks, this is A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. You'll find us online at vftv.net. Social media, of course, our Twitter feed, at View from Bunker. My personal Twitter feed, at Derek Gilbert. You'll find us on Facebook as well, the View from the Bunker page there. Give us a like. And uh, the new social media sites, if you're on those, Truth Social, Gab, MeWe, Getter, Parlor. You'll find me at Derek P. Gilbert. Uh, well, tonight, Thursday, June the 9th, Primetime coverage of the January 6th hearings. Because, as you know, if you listen to the corporate media, America was brought to the brink of disaster on January 6th of 2021. Now, of course, if you're watching this program, then you probably, like me, regard this as absolutely ridiculous. People frustrated with the political process in the, in, in the United States protested. And the protests got out of hand. There were some agents provocateur there. People who uh, didn't think things through got caught up in the moment, caught up in the crowd, and uh, wound up inside the U.S. Capitol. Bad idea. Bad idea, but not an insurrection. Not by any rational definition of the term. Make no mistake, the reason this is being broadcast in prime time, carried by several major networks, including C-SPAN and the U.S. Capitol's own YouTube feed, is because the corporate media... Their handlers, the hidden hand behind the scenes in Washington, D.C., want us to believe that this is a very important thing, all caps there, that we should pay attention to. They're sending a message that anybody who dared support a candidate who was not approved by the hidden hand must be completely removed from access to power. Donald Trump, anyone who supported Donald Trump, anyone who voted for Donald Trump. Now, Trump is not our savior. Anyone who thinks that I'm going that direction has not been paying attention for the last several years. Donald Trump was the best president we've had in my lifetime because he dared go against the grain. He dared to challenge the idea that government in Washington, D.C. is not of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's of the oligarchs, by the oligarchs, and for the oligarchs. That's no different than the way it's been in nearly every government on planet Earth throughout all of human history, going back to ancient Sumer and the kingdom of Nimrod. It's really no different. We Christians here in America, we've had a, a pretty good ride for a couple of centuries and change, but um, things are shifting, and uh, the Bible warned us about this. And yes, we can push back against it, and especially at the local level, school boards, county commissions, where we still have some autonomy— If you are called to get into government, that's the place to do it. Because at the national level, there is so much money at stake that there are people willing to do just about anything in order to keep their hands on power. Um, This past week on Skywatch TV, I talked about uh, revelation by the investigative website, The Gray Zone, that um, documents and emails leaked to The Gray Zone by somebody inside the conservative party in, uh, in the UK, an anonymous source, indicates that there is a hidden cabal in the UK as well that uh, maneuvered things behind the scenes during the final days of Theresa May's prime ministership to maneuver her out of power. Now, she survived a no-confidence vote, as did Boris Johnson this past week, but um, apparently these uh, financiers, uh, people connected to the intelligence services, former director of MI6, in fact, uh, implicated it by these documents and emails, in trying to sabotage May's Brexit negotiations in favor of a hard Brexit. They thought that Boris Johnson would be the guy to um, make that happen. Well, apparently Johnson has now run afoul of this cabal, hence the no-confidence vote earlier this week, which he survived. But blood is in the water. It remains to be seen how long Johnson can stay in office, because even even when they survive no-confidence votes, as May did, as John Major did, as... Margaret Thatcher did. It wasn't long after those votes that they were pushed out anyway. So the same thing may happen to Boris Johnson. But again, we shouldn't be surprised when we see these things happening. This is how governments here on planet Earth have always been run since forever. And I think the takeaway for us Christians is to remember that our salvation is not coming at the ballot box. We should 
participate in the political process, but let's not be surprised when things happen that we disagree with. But also remember that God is the one who raises up kings and tears them down again. And if somebody gets an office that we don't like, it's because God is trying to tell us something. He's allowing it for his ends. And uh, ultimately, at the end of the era, the end of the eon, his will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So um, this January 6th committee hearing, just another part of the hidden cabal behind the scenes trying to make sure that Donald Trump never returns to power or anyone who thinks like Donald Trump and thinks that they can go to Washington and clear out the swamp. Probably not going to happen. Um, The uh, other thing in the news this week is, uh, of course, the economic news, which uh, there are a couple of aspects of this. First of all, we are headed for what appears to be a global food shortage. Talked about that a little bit with uh, Mike Spaulding. These are strange times in which we live, and it looks like a lot of these... um, a lot of these problems that we're facing are self-inflicted, like uh, the gasoline prices, diesel prices at record highs here in the United States and elsewhere around the world. We lost some refining capacity here in the U.S., capacity that was shut down during the COVID shutdowns. Suddenly there was a, a, a much decreased demand for uh, fuels, and um, so they took the refining capacity offline. It has not come back online, and even though uh, that's the bottleneck, which is causing the supply squeeze, which drives up pricing. There are uh, executives inside the big oil and gas companies saying, look, nobody is going to invest in new refineries. In fact, an executive with Chevron this week said in an interview, we will never build another new refinery in the United States because government, because these things take 10 to 20 years to pay off. So it's a long term investment. If you're going to put your money in bankrolling a new refinery to make gasoline, kerosene, jet fuel, whatever, you're going to have to bank on the be, that being an operation for at least 10 years and preferably 20 to make your money back. And our government, elements within our government, making it very, very clear that they don't want us using these products going forward. So no investor of sound mind is going to invest in such a product a project at this time, which is sad because there are just certain vehicles that you are not going to run on electricity like jet airliners like uh well military jets military vehicles wake me when they invent the first electric powered tank it just ain't going to happen and here in the um here in rural america most of the people making these policies want to drive us out of rural areas and into cities where we can be more easily controlled, corralled and controlled. But in rural America, electric vehicles make no sense whatsoever. If you get an electric vehicle in a city and you run out of a charge, depending on the neighborhood where you break down, you can get help in a relatively short period of time. Here and in many places in rural America, you run out of juice, especially in the middle of summer or the middle of winter, you could be in a world of hurt. Um... At least, you know, if you, you, you've got a gasoline-powered vehicle, somebody coming along could uh, get you to a gas station where you can fill up again. But, uh, you know, if you've got an electric charging station, where's the next electric charging station? You can't bring the electric charger to the vehicle. You could bring a gas can back to the vehicle. Anyway, this is all deliberate. This is not a bug as far as our overlords are concerned. This is a feature as they try to crush the middle class, especially here in the United States. I mean, the, the noises made by the Biden administration to show that they're really, really trying to solve it. You know, the releases from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. OK, great. Uh, except that all of those releases went to Europe while prices continued to rise here in the United States. Did nothing to affect the price of gasoline here. And this uh, mandate this past week, we're going to mandate 15 percent ethanol. In our gasoline blends, instead of the 10%, well, you get above 10% and suddenly older vehicles, which are not designed to run on E15, like my 2005 Honda, um, that alcohol is actually a corrosive. And so engines start to break down on older vehicles. But to uh, our overlords, eh, you know, that just gets another internal combustion engine off the streets to be replaced by an electric vehicle. This past week, on Tuesday, Senator Debbie Stabenow of Michigan literally said to the Senate, 
that it doesn't matter how high gasoline prices go because she's got an EV. Yes, she said, once we solved the chips problem so I could get my electric vehicle, I finally got one and I drove from Michigan all the way here, drove past every gasoline station so it didn't matter how high the price was. Good for you, Senator Stabenow. What about the rest of us who can't afford a $50,000 entry-level electric vehicle or who live in parts of America where you're just not going to find a charger where you need it? Well, move to a city. This is, I, I hope, I hope that somebody clipped that video that audio and uses it against her in her next campaign because it's like Marie Antoinette saying, well, the peasants are starving because they don't have any bread. Well, let them eat cake. People are complaining because they can't afford the price of gasoline. Let them drive an EV. It's deliberate. They're trying to crush the middle class. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Well, up. Uh, you know that the uh, Skywatch TV Defender Conference continues through August 13th. If you haven't taken advantage of that yet, please do, because uh, two dozen presentations from the likes of Tom Horn, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, Pastor Carl Gallops, and uh, many others, Dr. Michael Lake. Some fascinating stuff. My presentation on the connection between the Mount of Olives and Mount Hermon, I think, is worth uh, an hour or so of your time. But you also get free access to all five of Skywatch Films' documentaries, including Josh Peck's latest, The Great Delusion about the UFO phenomenon, and the two award winners, um, Inhuman, the next and final phase of Man is Here, and um, Silent Cry, the darker side of trafficking, both of those award winners at the Telly Awards competitions. So uh, you get those, plus the tw- two dozen presentations to watch on your schedule through August 13th, and you can sign up, get instant access in full HD at DefenderConference.com. The Go Therefore Conference we talked about with Mike Spaulding. Uh, again, GoThereforeConference.com. And then coming mid-September, we're going to be in uh, Northern California. Pastor Dave Bryan, Church of Glad Tidings in Live Oak, California. That's uh, just north of Yuba City, which is about 45 miles north of Sacramento. If I read the map correctly. Uh, the Dark Secrets Bright Hopes Conference. Don't have details as far as registration or anything like that, but uh, just letting you know about it so you can plan. Uh, Ellie Marzuli, Timothy Albarino, and uh, Sharon and me will be there. Uh, I'll be speaking. Sharon will be uh, cheering. She's brilliant, but she really doesn't like speaking in front of gr- crowds uh, unless uh, uh, unless she has to. So, But um, I, I, I appreciate having her there. And, of course, Pastor Dave Bryan will be speaking as well. Uh, the website for the church to uh, keep an eye on it is uh, churchofgladtidings.com. Uh, we've got a couple of tours coming up you may be interested in. We'll be going to Turkey this fall, a small group, about two dozen at most, uh, October 18th through November 3rd, as we visit the cities of the Churches of Revelation, Gobekli Tepe, Haran, Abraham's hometown, and many other sites. The uh, itinerary with pictures posted at uh, skywatchinturkey.com. And uh, you can sign up there as well. And then uh, the next spring, we'll be back in the Holy Land. Skywatch TV's Tour of Israel. Sharon and me, alongside Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, March 19th through 30th with an optional extension over to Jordan. And uh, we hope and uh, pray that you consider joining us for that. That uh, is a life changer, especially when you see the battlegrounds, both um, past and future in this long spiritual war in which you are deployed. Uh, Skywatchinisrael.com for that one. Thank you for taking time out to watch this special midweek edition of A View from the Bunker. Uh, Leave us a review if you get a moment at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, YouTube, or wherever else fine podcasts are sold. And uh, give us a like at our Facebook page as well. Our announcer is the inimitable DC Good. And A View from the Bunker is a production of Gilbert House Ministries, released under Creative Commons Attribution, not commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is A View from the Bunker.